Hey guys, and as I said, as I promised before, this is going to be a review of a Noah show from 2005. Um, before we get to that, though, a little bit of a little bit of housekeeping. The link in the description will take you to a channel named Jaw Mail is Amazing. Some of you might remember I'm Awesome JH, who used to upload the pro rest stuff onto YouTube. It's the same guy, and I put his link in there because he seems to be the guy who's uploading the pro rest stuff onto the tube these days. In the absence of H781N, usually with these uploaders, they come and go because the channels get suspended. Um, in actual fact, H781N is still active and everything he's uploaded is still on there on the tube, which I'm very thankful for. But if you look at his comment section, he's ex he's exceeded his upload limit, so he's out of commission for the time being. So you can go to John Mail is amazing or amazing, and then you can go to ProRest.TV and look at our 2011 Match of the Year candidate list. He has a couple of those uploaded that, have, that no one else has uploaded so far that are definitely worth watching. Um, Dick Togo vs Antonio Honda being one of them. So there's that. Also, following this video I'm going to start doing top 10 or in some cases top 20 depending on the, the, the one in question. Um, top, top matches lists for certain guys. You know, I'm watching all this older stuff and I'm trying to find the best way to process my thoughts on things. You know, the things that I want to talk about and the things that I want to share with the with my viewers. Um, and find a way to put them in a video. And I've kind of decided that doing lists for certain talents seems to be the best way to go about that. I'm not going to do it for guys like Mizawa or Kobashi because they already have so many Melts or 5 star matches that it, that, that's basically a list in, in of itself and it's a list that many more people are familiar with so it's not it wouldn't be a wasted exercise but it's a bit, a bit redundant I don't think many people would, many people would be interested in it I'm going to do it more for guys like Kensuke, Nagata, Liger, maybe even Kenta or Marufuji you guys tell me which list you'd most like to see and I will take that into account I'm not going to say that I will um, have them all up very quickly although I have one almost finished that should be up this week but um, that'll be one thing I'll be doing it won't be the only thing I'll be doing but um, that's how I want to process my thoughts on older material I don't want to do show reviews all the time because it can be hard because as you can see here even for a big Noah Dome show the show is still it's still much it's still more about the matches than about the whole show itself um, if you if you get what I mean um, but all to the show itself, all to the 2005 show, Noah Destiny 2005. This is a pretty good indication of what Noah see as the best we can offer in a way. At least I think it should be because this is the biggest Noah show that they have ever done. This is the biggest show they've ever run. It was the second and only t and the second and the last time that they ran in the Tokyo Dome. And since that's the case, I think comparing a show like this to let's say. A WrestleMania, for example, I think is a pretty interesting um, idea. I've, I've kind of come to accept the fact that a Japanese show is built on one or two big matches, and those are going to get some filler, and you know most of it will, will be packed into the first hour of the show. I often find my, I, I often think to myself though, you should still notice something in the first hour. I think, even even if it's just as simple as some guys on a winning streak, I think you should still notice something. You know, like right now, the most purposeful purposeful thing on a Noah undercard. Um, if you can even call it an undercard, is Kenta being heel. And that would probably be a lot more interesting if Yone, of all people, was not the face. The last big Noah show was on the 8th of May. It still hasn't come up online yet. Um, the match was Yone in a handicap match against... a handicap gauntlet-type match against Kenta, Kanamaru, and Genba. That would be probably very good if Yone was not the face. If Yone was not a face... Yone is just not a face you can get behind. So, I don't know. That... You can call it a purpose, I guess, but it's not a good purpose because it just... I don't know. Yoni being the face just kind of kills that a lot for me. Um, why I brought that up, I'm not too sure. Um, it's harder to tell if they, did, if they did anything more purposeful on the first hour of this show um, in 2005 because I was not engrossed in the build-up and the aftermath. But the atmosphere of a big dome show does add a bit of excitement to it. And there were some fun interactions like Honda Tamon versus Morishima. Um, the first sense of purpose that I got though was from Mush King Terry versus Black Mask, which is actually Suzuki Katalo versus Ricky Marvin with both guys wearing masks. 
The wrestling itself wasn't anything more special than the first three matches, but it felt like it had a purpose because the cameras kept showing the kids in the crowd, and they were really into what was going on in that match, probably because of, you know, the costumes and the colours and all that sort of stuff. It really made the match feel a bit like a superhero fight, I think. You know, it was helped by the fact that there were a lot of flashy moves and that kind of thing. So, you know, it had a purpose. It had a very small, simple purpose, but I, it had a purpose anyway, and I appreciated that about it. So, that was probably the first... Um, meaningful thing I thought the show had, even if it was a very um, basic kind of match that I, the wrestling was not was not the best, but it had a it had a um, a certain charm to it. I thought. Then we got Kenta versus Kanemaru Yoshi Yoshinobu for the GHC Junior Heavyweight Title, and the thing with this match for me was I think Kenta was solid to good, and it made it somewhat exciting considering this was his first um, win of this championship, but Kanemaru was pretty sucky to be honest. Um, when he wasn't dropping Kenta on his head with DDTs time and time again, he was on defense and he had virtually no expressions at all, you know. he When the match was supposed to be getting to this intense point and when he was actually in under threat of losing his championship, he really didn't look like he cared at all. And it was really like, it was really just like, okay, Kenta's all there by himself really. And I give the match a solid rating just because, you know, even though Kenta, even though Kanemaru was tossing out DDTs with no meaning behind them, it did manage to make Kenta look something like a babyface in peril, which I'm okay with, and he did alright with. Um, so the match was okay to good. There was a bit of excitement towards the end when Kenta um, got a big win, so I, I was okay with it. Then we got Suzuki Minolu and Marafuji Naomichi versus Akiyama Jun and Hashi Makoto. This is the second best match on the show. I thought it was great. You know, Hashi is the underdog here, and I find his performance very, very interesting. Um, because, you know, he does work stiff. People were really into his shoot style work last year, even though that's not like really cup of tea. But he does really work stiff. And so for, for him to be an underdog is very, very interesting. I mean, it's not, it's not the same, it's not the same tough guy underdog role as, say, Kenta when he's in there against Takayama. Not only because Hashi is taller and just heavier built but his performance is just it's just more versatile and he can it comes off differently i'd say you know and akiyama is the perfect partner for him because you know he's a reliable veteran to back him up when things get a little too crazy and to complete the package of this match suzuki and marafuji are wonderful wonderful bullies uh, everything works and it delivers absolutely i don't have to describe the interactions because you can imagine what they are with the roles I just went over in this match. And when you think you've imagined everything possible, watch the match yourself and see um, see what delivers. Great, great, great stuff there. Um, worth watching, definitely. Um, then we get Rikyo Takeshi versus Tanahashi Hiroshi for the GHC Heavyweight Championship. Um, if you're like me and you're kind of used to the filler you get at the start of a Japanese show, then this is probably the biggest flaw of the show itself. It's not only a title match, but it's an interpromotional title match and it did not deliver. I mean, 2005 for Noah will be remembered, well, it is remembered as, for, uh, among many things, the failure of Rikyo as champion. And performances like this are a big part of why that is. I mean, there was no sense of direction to this match at all. Something would be happening and it wouldn't feel like it was accomplishing anything. You know, Tanahashi did some dives and some spots. But it meant nothing because a few minutes later, Rikyo would be in a pretty, in a pretty boring, if I do say so myself, um, offensive, offensive stretch, and it goes on like that until the finish. So I'm just like, it, I never got into the match for more than 30 seconds at a time. I don't know what to say. Not good. Not worthy of the dome. Absolutely not. Um, that, like, like I said, once you get past the filler at the start, this is probably the lowest point of the show, really. Um, just kind of depressing to see the title match did not deliver in the, on the biggest show they've ever had. Um, then we got um, Ten Liu again at Chirlo versus Ogawa Yoshinari. This is something that you look forward to because, you know what? We get to watch old man Ten Liu be stiff with Rat Boy. That's usually a recipe for good, good fun. I mean, it was like that and it was a lot of fun. We got pretty much a taster of all the things that you could expect the match you could expect that could be used as a substance for the entire match. You know, we got to kind of a taster of all those little things. You know, like Ten Liu being stiff, Ogawa being heel. It was all really, really engaging. Um, the finish came out of nowhere. Yeah, I don't really care. I want to give this match credit because I really did enjoy it. And I get, and I give it possibly a bit of a generous rating because it's just based off the fact that I enjoyed this more than many other matches on the show. Um, just, 
a really good sampler of what you could have had Tenryu being stiff the whole match, or you could have had Ogawa being healed the whole match and have that be the substance, and it would have been fun, but they kind of get a taster of everything the match could have been. It kind of felt like um, a build-up to something more, but I don't know if Tenryu and Ogawa ever had another match. I'm sure they did, it's a long careers, I'm sure they had at least one other throughout them, but that's not what we're talking about here. Um, then we got... Kensuke vs Kobashi in the chop battle to end all chop battles and as I said in the last 2005 video this is the sort of match that just fits so perfectly with the atmosphere of the Tokyo Dome. It's the sort of match that you can imagine just splitting the crowd so so perfectly and you know you can also imagine it being broadcast on a big big plasma screen in a bar with everyone just there just glued to it and just wanting to see their guy win. I've rewatched it once since I did that last video and I went a bit more in depth on how I feel about it on ProRest.TV. Basically I was asking myself, using this match as a template, for a perfect or close to perfect match, so does everything need to have a purpose or can the good parts of the match be so good that it can, it can be perfect anyway? It doesn't have to be completely purposeful the whole way around, it can just hit a, hit a peak that's so good it doesn't really matter. Because, you know, there's two control segments at the start of this match that are just filler. They're really nothing more than filler. And the finish itself, while it's while it's okay and while it's acceptable for the match, it's not a hot finish. It's not the sort of finish that you're just that you're remembering afterwards. You're remembering the chop battle, but you're not remembering the finish. Which sometimes doesn't matter, but when you're talking about a perfect match, you'd want the finish to be really decisive. You want the finish to be a memorable finish. And it was it was a decisive factor for me in not giving the match five stars or not saying it's my 2005 match of the year because it's not. It's not. Um, it's not even the best match to happen in Japan in 2005, I don't think. It's the most famous one, but it's not the best one, I don't think. The be the tag in November where Kobashi teamed with Shiozaki and Kensuke teamed with Nakajima is just that little bit better. And for me, the, 2000 the 2005 match of the year, as tough as that question is, I'm set on Angle versus HBK from WrestleMania. Um, this, however, is still an amazing spectacle. It's a big match for a big show, and it does need to be seen. Um, the title match was what not to do in the Dome. This is what to do in the Dome, I would say. Um, amazing spectacle of a match. Then we get the main event, the last meeting of Mizawa versus Kawada. Um, this is what no one needed to hope to get a respectable attendance in the Dome. And with the lack of anything with this sort of appeal on the current scene, we might never see Noah in the Dome again. Um, the way the match is laid out, it's actually... It, it feels like it's laid out a lot like a tribute match to the matches they had when they were in their prime. But Kawada's performance, I would say, is above that. Um, Kawada stamps his own signature on the match that makes it feel more important than just a tribute match. He brings the stiff shots, the selling, and the finish. The finish... The finish is short, but it's very, very impactful and meaningful. You get the sense that Kawada's endurance is just... He toes that line between never giving up and never selling to perfection. He, he, gets that, he gets the point. He gets the point of never giving up, but he, it never feels like he's never selling. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and he gets that just perfectly, perfectly right. You know, The match is not great, but it's very good at this stage in both guys' careers. It's very good for where they were as, uh, as wrestlers at that stage in their careers. So that's the 2005 Noah show. And as I said before, um, I'm doing those lists. I'll have one out hopefully in the next two days. I'm almost finished with it. Um, you guys can tell me who you'd like to see um, immortalized in a top 10 or top 20 list. And with that, I will talk to you guys later.